All right, let's see if I can get this loaded up. Uh, so for today's Nearpod, I'm trying something a little bit different, and I'm going to try to combine my video recordings with the Nearpod activities. So let's see if we can get this to work smoothly enough. Um, so today we are looking at some more elements of syntax, um, which is part of English conventions and style in Beowulf. The two things we're going to be looking at are on the title screen here. The first one is apposition and the second one, get ready to feel smart once you know what this is, diazugma. Whoa, that's a big word. We're going to get to that in just a minute, but let's first do a quick review of syntax and my face is in the way. There we go. We'll move it right up there. Okay, so quick review syntax. Uh, we talked a little bit about syntax when we looked at punctuation in poetry. That punctuation tells us when to pause um, in poetry, when we see those commas. Um, syntax, even larger than punctuation, it's, it, punctuation is part of it, but here we see that syntax of a sentence really is just its structure. How is the sentence set up? Um, and this includes the arrangement of and the relationships among the words in a sentence. So it's the way you kind of order your words, right? Um, and this idea of syntax is the reason that you can write the same sentence in multiple ways. So I have my examples here. Sentence one, Jenny is my best friend and she likes to bake cookies. That's one sentence. Uh, she hopes to become a famous baker one day. Because that's the first grouping of sentences, or that's one way to arrange this information. You can see in sentence two, there's another way to provide the same information. You're just arranging your words a bit differently. So it says, in this example, Jenny, my best friend, likes to bake cookies, which is why she wants to be a famous baker someday. So you're saying the same thing. Those sentences have the same meaning. But the syntax is different. The arrangement and order of the words is different. So that is syntax. And the two things we're looking at, apposition and diazugma, are both part of syntax or the way that words are arranged. So let's take a look at the first one, which is apposition. Oh, I already said this. Look at me skipping ahead. Apposition and diazugma, those are two devices that are part of syntax and they are used in Beowulf a lot. Um, that is why we are looking at them. Um, it provides you a little bit more insight into the writing of this epic poem. Um, and you'll notice once we cover this, you'll start noticing that more and more in things that you read um, and maybe even uh, be aware of the fact that you can use these in your own writing in the future. Okay, so first, apposition. What is it? Um, so here's kind of quick definition of apposition for you. This is when an author places a phrase next to a noun or vice versa, um, typically side by side so that the phrase either identifies, clarifies, or elaborates on the noun. That's a little like, okay, cool. Not really sure what that still means. So Let's take a look at some examples. Okay. So here we have a sentence and they're breaking it up here for you to see um, the apposition a little more clearly. So this sentence would be Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, is often called the U.S.'s greatest inventor. Um, so you could take out that this red box here. Where's my little pin? Oh, I can't reach it. Eraser pin. Yes, there we go. Ha ha. Um, so you could take this portion out and the sentence still works. Edison is often called the U.S.'s greatest inventor. That sentence still works. Um, but what is useful about apposition and why it's used is because, excuse me, it provides us more information about the noun that you're talking about. Um, so in this case, Edison, instead of just saying, oh, yeah, you know, Edison, he's the greatest inventor. Well, it's really helpful to say what he invented uh, for you to then know that if you agree or disagree with the statement, right? So Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, that identifies who Edison is. And it's providing more information, clarifies the sentence. It does all these wonderful things for us. Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, is often called the U.S.'s greatest inventor. So this red portion here is called an appositive, just in the phrase itself, 
you don't necessarily need to know that though. I just want you to focus on the fact that apposition is when an author is using uh, this phrase here to add information basically to the main noun. Another example down here, Frankie, the dog that lives next door, likes to go for walks in the park. So you could just say Frankie likes to go for walks in the park. And you're like, oh, okay, is that your Frankie, your dad, Frankie, your best friend? And he likes to walk around. Oh no, it's Frankie the dog. The dog likes to go for walks in the park. Right? That really clarifies the sentence. It, it, it totally changes the meaning. Um, it makes the meaning more clear. You know that it is a dog that likes to go for walks in the park. Apposition is always going to be broken off by two commas here. Right, so you have whatever your noun is, and then the phrase that describes your noun is going to be comma, and then the phrase comma. And that is apposition. We'll look at two more examples. Get my little eraser here. Can I just clear? Oh, yeah, look at that. There we go. Um, okay, we'll look at two more examples. If I can put this pen away. Oh, yes, mouse. We got this, guys. Okay. More apposition examples. So in everyday talk, um, you could say this two ways, this first sentence. So you could say, my best friend, Alex, likes to bake cookies too. So if you're just saying my best friend, well, giving it a name that identifies who your best friend is, right? That would be apposition. You could also say it the other way. Alex, my best friend, likes to bake cookies too. And in that sense, you're providing extra information on who this Alex is. Um, that you're talking about. Um, in Beowulf, we see this a lot of places, um, but one of the uh, areas we see it is after um, Grendel comes and attacks those 30 men um, in that first set of lines, and we get this line, Hrothgar, their lord, sat joyless in Herot. Um, so Hrothgar is the noun here, and their lord, meaning all the men, um, that were murdered, he was their lord, or he was their master, their king. All right, so it's giving us extra information here about who Hrothgar is. So this is apposition. Um, I believe next you're going to uh, do some more practice questions uh, to make sure you get a good handle on how apposition works. Okay, next we have diazugma. All right, and this is where you should get ready to feel real smart. This is the kind of stuff that's like, <sighs> like, wow, you know, when am I going to use this? Well, when you're going to use this is now in this class. Um, and you're going to use it in your writing. If you're someone that plans to go to college, it's good to have this tool in your back pocket um, for writing, for identifying, and it's just good Sometimes it's just good to feel like, yeah, I know what diazugma is. I could tell you what that means. I could give you some examples, right? Sometimes that just feels nice. Anywho, let's break it down. So uh, the definition we have here is diazugma is when a single subject is connected to two or more verbs, either to add dimension to the first verb or to establish a clear sequence of actions or events. Words, 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 so many words. Basically, it's when you're using multiple verbs to describe one noun, one subject. So one person, thing, is doing multiple things. That's kind of an easier way to think about this. Let's look at some examples again. I apologize. Okay. All right, so in everyday speech, oh man, I am sorry guys, but I'm far into this video. We're sticking with it. Okay, in everyday speech, um, if someone asks you or if I asked you, hey, what did you do uh, yesterday? What did you do over the weekend? You might say, oh, yesterday I went to the mall. Well, you probably wouldn't say this now because COVID and we're not going too many places at once, right? But in normal life, you might say, yesterday I went to the mall bought some shoes, ate some pizza, walked around, drove home, and watched a movie. This is diazugma, right? Such a fancy word for something that we kind of do um, all the time. Again, it's the, the noun, the subject of the sentence here is I, right? I, and, and all the things I did. I went, I bought, ate, walked, drove, and watched. This is diazugma. 
the example we have for when we see this in Beowulf um, is again from when Grendel is attacking the men in that first scene. And it says he slipped through the door and there in the silence snatched up 30 men, smashed them unknowing in their beds and ran out with their bodies. So we get four verbs right in a row there, all connected to Grendel and something he's doing. And it's giving us a sequence of events, right? He slipped and then he snatched and then he smashed and then he ran. This is diazugma. Okay, so multiple verbs in a row connected to one um, noun, person, place, or thing, right? All right, got some review questions for this um, coming up. And then uh, we get to move into some, some reading. Okay, and now that you have done some practice, you are now a syntax champ. You have um, apposition and, uh, oh my goodness, and diazuma down. And look at this. Now go read the epic Battle with Grendel. Being sure to listen to my audio recordings. It's not Battle with Grendel. It's the Battle with Grendel's mother is what we're reading next. All right. I will see everybody on Zoom in just a minute.